Welcome back to the weekend debate. And uh, this section, uh, I kind of promise a bit more about the PAC, which uh, stands for? Public Accounts Committee. I'm glad you remember it. <laughs> Some things. Good job on you. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you had a chance to speak to Dr. Rachel Glover. I think that was a, an amazing thing to listen to. I mean, I, I found it quite jaw dropping almost. Mm. Um, yeah. I wish I could have been there in person to film it, but it wasn't that sort of event. Mm. You, you, you really did uh, your homework on your questions. Yes, because um, I think it's fair to say, there are some things I can say and some things that I, I can't, so to, oh, okay, just, me. Why I, can't I, you say things? What, is it so well, because, because it's not for me uh, to speak about what happened in, what's happening inside the PAC, because we're in the middle of the, the examination, and it's for the PAC through the, uh, Mr. Speaker to actually, uh, as it were, uh, come out to Timwald with our conclusions. So I, I, I'll stick to stuff that is already very much in the public domain. I think that's fair, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, except to say one thing before it got to the, the PAC, uh, and that is that, that, well, as far as I'm concerned, um, Dr. Ra Rachel Glover is an extraordinary woman, and she has delivered the most magnificent service to the Isle of Man. And I personally deeply regret that that hasn't been acknowledged to the degree I believe it should be. Um, if I can compare, again, this is in the public domain. Jersey was looking for a, a, a comparable service last year. And if you read the, Jer the Jersey newspapers, they bought in a, a full-blown lab in containers with staff, cost them five million pounds between July and September. Rachel Glover rocked up with top class information support, guidance and equipment. Off just because she's a local girl made good and the way that lady has been treated just because she speaks her mind I think has been absolutely pathetic and that's a personal view um, as far as Rachel's concerned you, you can understand her discomfort with the political process governmental engagement um, and it, it, it took some time to engender sufficient trust uh, in Rachel's mind for her to address the issues through the PAC, which she's now doing. Um, so, you know, the, the government were, 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 were claiming uh, quite rightly that the, the, uh, the PCR system that we had was, was, you know, gold standard. That was Rachel. The equipment was Rachel. The training given to the lab was Rachel. They, they found a machine though in a back room that no one knew about, and that, which she said, that's the machine we need. Yeah. I thought that was brilliant when that came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And then this sort of, this uh, general denial about, uh, about uh, uh, ge genomic sequencing. Oh, it's just one of those things. No, it's not. It's not one of those things. And um, I think Rachel said this in public somewhere, that, that there are ways of analyzing uh, PRC um, PCR, sorry, uh, uh, evidence to drill down further to identify what vari particular variant it is. So she's she's an absolutely extraordinary woman, and I I just crumple um, in the way that the the senior politicians uh, have handled this, and um, I, I only hope that out of all of this, there's a way back. Yeah. There's a way back. How many times have you said that? You know, she she said she'd work with government many many times. It's not happening. But we'll come back to you, Jen. It was absolutely compelling listening, and I think anyone in the Isle of Man community, if they do find time, just to go into that because you listen to someone who is obviously speaking from the heart, recollecting a chain of events, and we're still awaiting for this point by point rebuttal. I know there's been a, a, a statement today that something will be coming out in due course, but there was no immediate you know, um, challenge to what was said. But I think to the electorate around the Isle of Man, half of whom are going to be female, um, they're going to be looking at sympathy with Dr. Glover and the way she's been treated. We had that incident with the, uh, the shredded letter and what have you. Which Is it was, a letter or was, not a letter? Was a, was a, a farce, really, the way it was articulated and so forth. But you're looking at the gender bias right across the parliamentary system you know, in government, 
you know, where it counts, in, in combing, that there are no women represented. And it's almost got that kind of flavour, the, the way she's been treated. Is there a, that element that, that has played a part? Are we getting down the word misogynistic here, are we? I mean, almost well, like... Well, what, what I'm saying is, it, it, it does seem to be unbalanced, what's happened, is the treatment. Yeah. Is, I mean, not having a woman in combing, well, there was one, obviously, there was one, and then... Wasn't anymore. One, 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 well, in common because we had uh, ex health Kate. minister Kate, yeah, Kate, but uh, yeah. flowers but, but, and flower know, it, and all that. It, sort of. It's completely, you know, deserted, uh, you know, for women, and and you know we've been through this this amazingly yeah. challenging it's time, and where there's been no input. It's deeper than misogyny, and we accidentally touched on it in the first section about <clears throat> the, the the control that government's got. It's 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 got a it's get it's large and getting bigger. That's number one. Uh, number two. There's an awful lot of businesses on the Isle of Man that have contracts with government. Look what, look what the government spends in a year. And there are other businesses that haven't got contracts with government that would like contracts with government. So progressively, government's got in a position where it believes it can say what it wants to say without examination, just for once. Somebody came along who knew exactly what they were talking about and criticised in a constructive way what was being said and well the response publicly because I'm staying in that space mm. the response publicly has been just be breathtaking really as far as uh, the the ministers have behaved mm. embarrassing did they not see what Rachel did you know I mean she's a she's a heroine can I be really well, brutal she, she here? needs an award Yes, can I be brutal here? A politician gets an MBE and Rachel gets dismissed. I rest my case. Wow. Okay, have a go, have a go at this. You listened to it, you must have uh, made yeah, your I did judgment. listen to it yeah. and it was very detailed. I've listened to a few of her presentations I've read yeah. and she is a well detailed lady. Uh, to me, she knows what she's talking about. She's, she's I believe she's holding back a lot of hurt. I think you can tell she has passion for the Isle of Man. As you say, Chris, she's local to the Isle of Man. She did everything for the best and she's been treated. Right, well, way. let's bring in this rebuttal thing, which you just touched on because I was, I was holding that back. We finally get, as day broke of recording, mm -hmm. not the blow by blow rebuttal, which was I was led to believe and it was taking them a few days because they had Easter and they had to take their time off. And they're off. Yeah, we, we've heard all this. So a week goes by and even come the you know, weekend, I go, wow, so there's nothing now to next week. But anyway, over the weekend, we get a sort of summary. Anyone want to pick up on you know, what it, they it think was, of that? It was vague. Vague, and vague I, news. I think, you know, certainly this weekend, our media will be probing for further information on that because when they said, they made the claim, right, we, we're going to meet this head on. There's going to be a series of claims and, you know, counter Yeah, it was like some of it. It was like every point. Like yeah. We're going to rebut every single yeah. point. That's how it read to me anyway, yeah? And I think the public could welcome some immediacy, immediacy about that and transparency. Okay. Uh, sorry. Um, you want to, no doubt, pick up on this one? Well, well, well yes. I mean, I, I, I've, I've only, I only read it a few moments before we sat yeah. down here today. Yeah. Um, but one of you said that... that Something about a couple of months. I mean, I, I there was a, there was a, a vague time frame put in, but that that could have been the the, um, the, the journalistic hand that, that dictated that. I, I I've I've seen the attachments that we as PAC have got, um, and I purposefully didn't read them before I came here because it, it's not for me to comment on that. It's for the PAC to deliberate carefully. But the PAC will deliver deliberate very carefully indeed, and then deliver its. Uh, it's a review at the end of it, and but it will be before the election. Won't you be hearing from other people for PSC on, on this whole issue? Because you can call who you want, right? Will you be yeah, calling well, uh, the, the minister or just high-ranking health people? Uh, we, will, we, will tend to, we, we will tend, to, uh, as is normal, we'll tend to uh, limit our inquiries to senior politicians and very, very senior Officers in a department. How does it work? Do they have to appear? I mean, I mean, obviously, everything they say is covered by protection, isn't it? They they can say whatever they want, and yes. yeah, their parliamentary privilege. Yeah. But can you make people appear, or is no. it one of those things that's just voluntary? No, no, no. I don't think people understand how powerful the policy review committees are. They only emerged uh, into the, our current system ten years ago. We've been, we've been refining them all the way through. An awful lot of work's been done in this five-year session. 
But if a, if, a, if a policy review committee, of which the PAC is the most senior, uh, requires to speak to somebody, and that person says, well, no, I, actually, I, I, I don't want to, we can issue what's called a precept, which is an order, because, because a, a, a policy review committee, and PAC is the most senior one, because it's all the chairs of the policy review committees that sit on PAC. If we wish to hear from somebody, we issue the precept, and they must... They must turn up. They can actually be arrested. It's never happened. Of uh, and they no. can't go for the Fifth Amendment or something like that. No, no they, <laughs> they, 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 they turn up and they, um, they answer the questions that we ask or put their argument forward. But the, the, the PAC is a, a, a standing committee, so they're building up a wealth of knowledge and understanding of the executive system. And, and I very much hope that the work done this, this five-year period uh, moves on into the next house. Um, I was very pleased to, to, to see Timwell deliver a determination that members on the policy review committees and PAC in the future will be paid the same as those sitting in departments. And in other words, it creates a bit of a career route for people who want to enter into really serious scrutiny. Mm -hmm. And for those who were worried about a lack of, of, of scrutiny, um, I, I would point to that and say the, the scrutiny system has got a long way to go, but it's getting better. Just explain to me, though, you, you, you can call all these witnesses, you then make a report. Yes. We're running out of time, right? So what's going to happen? This well, report won't be seen by this administration, will yes, it? We, we You're going to rush it through? To no, one? we're not going to rush it through. You're going to have it through before no, hang on, July? Let me, let me ask you, answer your question in a bit more detail without yeah. taking too much time. Yeah. Um, when, when a, a Policy Review Committee or PC produces a report and, uh, and submits it, government, the Council of Ministers, are then allowed two months to answer any points that we make on recommendations, um, which would slow things r right down and probably end up not being able to do anything more than lay a report before Tim and not be able to debate it. So uh, recently we've migrated to another system of having something called general debates and and submitting reports without recommendations. In other words, these are our findings. It's up to the general public, the media, and most importantly, fellow members of Timwold to take a view on the our findings. That means you're toothless, actually. Does that mean it, I don't think so. <laughs> well, you know, you're just if you're you saying this is our conclusion. No one's going to get a spank over the wrap over the, the back of the hand or anything. Then. I I challenge that. What, what okay. If, what, well, you if, just what, what, what if you read in a in a policy review or a PAC report uh, incredibly critical remarks? Wouldn't you want to then bring that yourself as a media person into the public arena and have the public take a view on that? Isn't that you can a take very a view? But it's not going to change the world, is it? That's unfortunately the way we live. And I mean, just about what you say, other people will, will have a totally opposite opinion. That's another thing that we, we well, have at these least, days. At least we will be getting. Let's bring these guys in here. Uh, Come on. I think that the public Sorry. would like to see facts laid, laid out, timelines, easy to digest, easy to read, and they can make their own judgment. Mm. But from what I hear, mm. it's going to be quite obvious what where the situation lies. So, And September, of course, is time for decision-making. Mm. So. Yeah. Well, it, we do have a timeline, and obviously we need to make sure that we get everything through in time to be able to, I presume, uh, this regime, would they answer or can it go over to the next regime? How no, does it no, work? no, no. Uh, the election is a start again point. Uh, mm. um, a reset. Yes, a mm. reset button. So it's it's very important from the PAC's point of view that we get a, a report out both on the what you might call the Rachel Glover affair uh, and also uh, who said what on the steam bucket affair as well. But the other committee... Ah, okay, Let's, on the sideline of that, did you read anything into the, the, the chairman and whatever... The, 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 the guy who's running the steam packet is just going for retirement and before not, not before so. anybody gets the blame? I mean, am I just being totally cynical not on that it. one? No, I don't. I, I, personally, I don't see it that way. Right. I, 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 I see Mark as being somebody and, and the, the other guys who mm -hmm. resigned as well. They've been there a long, long time. Mm -hmm. They worked under uh, a, a quite different regime. Mm. Um, things are obviously changing now. The public of the Isle of Man own the steam packet. My view is it's a sensible time to step aside and, and let somebody else take over. Yeah, what do you think? 
Yeah, no, it's it's perfect timing. Um, certainly, uh, we're, obviously, we're coming out of this COVID-19 crisis and hopefully we can see a future for the island going forward. And I think the timing is, is right to give a chance for, for a new... Um, man, man. Oh, well, it's an exciting time, isn't it? Because <laughs> we've got the new ferry terminal in Liverpool and we've oh. got a new vessel arriving. So there's yeah. 200, pound, 200 million pounds yeah, hopefully, of... Hopefully, hopefully we've got some well, tourism. The, yeah, the terminal's doing its best to overspend. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it, it'll be, it's, what is it, 48 million? It's going to go north of 50 million something. I, mean, oh, I can't wait to go and have a look at it as soon as we can get those boys. <laughs> I want to see what's, it's just a hole in the ground, isn't it? I don't know how far it's got even, has it? It's, they ha no, the structure itself. Oh, it's, it's not. No, no, it's still groundworks as far as I know. Oh, gosh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Mark Woodward, bless him, never puts himself into the public areas, does he talk to the public? Or, you know, we talk about these things. Would, I mean, you could call him then and he, he would come along. Oh, that's great, I've tied it up nicely. He would have to talk to you if you asked him to. Hmm. Uh, well, there's two, there's two uh, reports, uh, investigations going on. One's by government itself uh, through Stephen Hines, who's the director, has been, the, is the director of Audit Advisory. Um, I'm sure he'll do the very best he can, um, but it's all, it's, it's going to be very, very important that the, that, that, that his findings are balanced against the parliamentary right. examination and inquiry of the same subject. And both Do you want him in front of your committee? I mean, is it up to you to ask him? Who, who, who's, who's got that power to say, you must come and talk to us? The, the, Any one of these the committees? The PAC will decide both on the Rachel Glover affair and, and the steam packet inquiry mm -hmm. as to who it's important to listen to, above and beyond the, the uh, evidence that we've sought from all parties. Um, sufficient to, to make a sensible report. Mm. Um, it's not for me to say here and now what that is because the PAC as a whole will, okay. will make that decision. Yeah. To finish this section off, let's talk about the president of Tim Walt. Uh, Steve Brogan, standing down. Yeah. And the, the you know options are open now to who wants to take that position. But let, let me start by getting your views mm. on Steve Brogan and his five years in tenure. Come to you in a moment. I mean, you're mm. talking as people just... You know, no probably from seeing on Timwall Day, maybe like me, mostly. Yeah. What do you think, Steve Roden? Did he do a good job as president? I, I, I think he's done a commendable job. I think he's certainly been very professional and he certainly uh, followed the uh, Alabama values. Mm -hmm. Jeff? I think on a ceremonial front, a good bigger head um, for those who admire the traditional side of things and, and the history and so forth. Um, but, you know, the, the seat could be filled by numerous people. So we, we, we will see. I mean, I'm, I'm well, a modernist, really, in, the, he, in this, oh, on this side well, of things. No, no, no need for dressing up in pomp and circumstance. Well, we, and we could talk about, you know, the uh, relevancy of the, the bishop, you know, in, yeah. in the process as well. So that there's things like that. I've got a few. Okay. Well, uh, Mr. Roden likes dressing up, as you say, in the pomp and circumstance. I think he does. And uh, obviously, um, we come to his successor, which could be another person who likes putting on uniforms. But anyway, first of all... Quite, quite possibly. Yeah, I'll come to that. But what, what, I mean, you, you're the one that has to do this and Tim Wilden do that to get his attention uh, when you want to ask a question. Steve's done a good done job. Right? Stephen's, Stephen's done a good job. I mean, we're, we're going through some extraordinary times, turbulent times, um, uh, not least of which is an area which, you know, I, I uh, sort of have extraordinary frustrations over, and that is... The, the need to speed up modernisation of, of our government. But we've gone through a, a major financial crisis and then that, and we had COVID. It, it's been an extraordinary time. And, and, and on balance, I think having somebody of a traditional nature, a, a steadying hand within uh, the, the presidential role has been the right person at the right time. That doesn't necessarily mean that the new president, whoever that is, will have to bring his or her uh, bent to the job. Mm. Um, and I'm sure that will happen. It's been a pretty well-behaved group of people, though, compared this is, with this uh, is, previous administrations, This right? is the most well-behaved house. Yeah. Uh, I was in shock for the first two years. You know, I mean, the lobbying that went on then. <laughs> I mean, that was extraordinary. <laughs> don't forget, the, yeah. the, 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 this is an interesting discussion approaching a, a, an election. The previous house was a very experienced one. Yeah. Um, and they know they knew what they where they were. I didn't always agree that where they were was well, the right place. Uh, everybody brought their own opinions to it, but there was there was confidence and drive. Uh, albeit you may not very well agree with what was being said in the uh, old house, and then a whole tranche of new members came in, and those members took a couple of years to find their feet. They found their feet, 
And the, the house has been a pretty different place for the last two years compared to the first two years. Um, what we can't do in the next house is, is spend two years trying to find that house, because I won't be there obviously, the, that house finding its feet because there's so much to do. Mm. I think one of the most interesting and quite exciting things that's just uh, kicked off now under the Treasury Minister has been this major economic strategic review in conjunction with KPMG. Um, you're looking at me with some doubt there, but I, uh, we had a presentation um, this last week and um, it was very good. It was very, very strategic and very high level and exactly the sort of thing that we should be doing. Okay. Just literally to wrap this up, you're not standing definitely. No, no. You got any... Uh, uh, I get asked the question all, all the time and I live in uh, Russian <laughs> and there's a whole host of potential candidates out there. So naturally, I am tempted to look at that. Naturally, you know that's that's just the way it is, isn't it? They poli they're like politicians already. <laughs> Season politicians. I ask a question, I get a run around a there. A decision like that is is huge. Yes or no? It, it's huge. at the minute. Uh, at the I, minute, I wouldn't say anything until the summer. You know, it's some, right. some so stuff. that's a maybe. I, I, was, I was going to say that if you're going to stand, you need to start. Think about saying it. Saying yes, pretty yeah. Any, any, any ideas? At the moment, uh, you know, I'm. Uh, well, you're going to give another politician an answer. Holding okay. my cards close. You no, know, I think more people ever. I, I, feel, I feel I'm, I'm going to be the only <laughs> non politician in the show. I've been there. I've tried it. Back. I've tried it. What, what I can say is yeah. that I'm a very active member with the Manx Labour Party. We've got some good campaigning with Sarah and Joni in Douglas and the, the, the town councillors, and it's been interesting just working in a political group and examining what's happening, what the way ahead is, and uh, hopefully engaging in some exciting campaigns. And we've got Gareth in Garth as well. So, you know, it's, it's been exciting times for politics because people are taking an interest in, and it's worth having a quick look at these sites on Facebook. The Isle of Man kind of lives around Facebook in a way. Mm. Oh. And you look at the attention people give to certain news and Pages and what have you. But can Pages you take the feedback? Because it's horrendous. It's the wild west of people yeah, I, get put off. I'm sure by the whole thing. I but don't know. I think I think people may exert their energies when, when they're looking at the ballot paper in September and they make the decision then. And the the victors in the campaigns will have a high profile in the media. I think I can see that. And mm. Examining, you know, the actions of the administration over the last five years and trying to think what are the triumphs. That have happened yeah. in five years. Okay. And it's, it's definitely going to be very interesting in the next election. I think we're going to get a few surprises, indeed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that goes without saying. Anyway, that's we'll, we'll come, we can cover that many more times. That's part two. Uh, I definitely want to talk about uh, tourism, especially with obviously these two guys. And you, because you involved in tourism mm -hmm. and, and the hotel. But yeah, you know, that's well, the subject which we were going to talk about all those months ago when you were going to come for the show, oh, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's so, been a lot of changes, yeah. hopefully, for the better. You know. Tourism, in our next section. Thank you.